math, everyone. Welcome to example 10. So let's solve an annuity problem. And if you haven't heard of an annuity, annuity is a, a type of account. It's a financial product that pays out a certain amount of money, a certain amount of payments to an individual. And a typical annuity is a retirement fund. And you may or may not have a retirement fund right now at this point in your life. But um, typically when you get into a job that has some benefits, like I, I could say, for example, my, my job has this. Um, each month you deposit money into your retirement account so that when you retire, you can take money out at regular intervals. Typically, you'll, you'll take it out monthly. All right, and that, that's what an annuity is. All right, so again, it's just a financial product and it pays out a fixed number of, um, a fixed amount of money um, once you retire, at least in the case of a retirement fund. All right, so let's read through this. At the beginning of each month, $200 is deposited into a retirement account. The fund earns 6% annual interest, compounded monthly, and paid into the account at the end of the month. How much is in the account if deposits are made for 10 years? So imagine you wanted to retire, right? And you're putting in 200 a month, 6% interest, compounded monthly, I mean 6% annual interest compounded monthly, and you're going to put that money in there for 10 years. And you want to see how much you have at the end. And you might be thinking, hey, didn't we do some kind of savings account problem in chapter six, and we did, but that was a different setup. In the chapter six problems, you put in one lump sum and then let it stay there. This is a different type of savings account in that you're putting in money every month or putting in money at regular intervals. So the formula that we picked up in chapter six doesn't apply here. There is a different formula for this, so I don't want you to think there isn't a formula for it, but we're gonna do it looking through the lens of a geometric series. All right, and we want to do a finite geometric series because this isn't going to last forever. This is only going to last for 10 years. So this would be an example of a finite geometric series. All right, how much money am I going to have at the end of all of this? All right, and we can get, again, a good idea of how much you would have. Let's, let's see how much you would have if you were gaining no interest, if you just had cash and you kept it, I don't know, in a jar under your bed or something like that. You're gonna put in $200 a month, right? So there are 12 months in a year, and you're gonna leave it in there for 10 years. So you can imagine at the end of this, you're gonna have at least $24,000, right? And again, that's with no interest. You're actually gaining 6% interest here, all right? And anytime we're getting 6% or a, a proportion or a percentage of this $200 given back to us, we're looking at exponential growth, which means we're looking again at a geometric series. So the things that we wanna keep track of, if you ever want a finite geometric series, don't forget that this is the formula for it. So we would have S sub N would be equal to A sub one times one minus R to the N oops, over one minus R. I might sneeze in a moment, so I'm gonna, yep, here it comes, hold up. Hold up. Oh, is it going away? No. <laughs> Excuse me. Okay. So, got a finite geometric series. What I want to know, I want to know S sub N. So I got to figure out N, A1, and R. Right? If I can figure out those three variables, I can get S sub N. Well, let's take a look at A1. That's the easiest thing to spot. We know A sub 1 is equal to $200. All right. That's how much I'm initially going to have in that savings account. All right. Now to find R, we have to be a little bit creative because we're getting interest compounded monthly, but this is an annual interest rate. So I'm just gonna put another little note here so we can have this. All right, so note, to find R, divide your annual interest rate by 12, and then we'll add one to it to represent the new monthly deposit. All right, so let me write that, write that out. So to find R, all right, take your annual interest rate and divide it by 12. All right, so divide the annual interest rate All right, and the reason I wanna divide it by 12 is because I'm getting interest monthly. So I wanna divide that annual interest rate by 12, but we wanna add it to one. 
because this is just the interest we're getting. I wanna add it to one so I know how much I actually have in that account from month to month because you have your previous deposit plus that interest. All right, so to find R, like I said, divide the annual interest rate by 12 and then add one to represent the new monthly deposit. So if that's the case, if we're going to follow this, then my R would be 1 plus, all right, we're getting 6% interest rate annually, but I'm getting that over the course of 12 months, so let's see what this is ultimately going to be equal to. So this is going to be 1 plus my 6% interest annually divided by 12 months. So if I get 6% interest over the course of the year, it looks like I get 0.5% interest per month. Right, because point half a percent times 12 would get me to 6% annually. So it looks like my R value is 1.005. All right, I'm getting there. Now the last thing I need is N. How many deposits am I actually going to make over the course of 10 years? Well, N in this case is my 10 years times 12 months. Because don't forget that, yes, you're doing this for 10 years, but you're making monthly payments. So you're actually ultimately going to make 120 deposits. All right, so I know A sub 1, I started with $200. My interest rate over the course of the year, right, 6% interest compounded monthly. So each month I'm getting 1.005 for my R value, and I'm going to do this 120 times. So with all that being said, Let's figure out what we have here. So S of 120 would be equal to A sub 1 times 1 minus R to the N. All right, our N was 120. And I'm going to put that in ratio to 1 minus R. All right, so let's see how much money we have. I'm going to be really careful with my parentheses. So let me put my calculator here. Here we go. So I'm going to do 200 times 1 minus 1.005 raised to the 120th power, and I'm going to divide that by 1 minus 1.005. And when I crunch that number, it looks like I'm going to have $32,775.87. Okay, and let me go ahead and put a little separator there. All right, and let's just think, was, was that better did the interest really help out? Well, remember when we were getting our initial idea, we said, well, we were gonna deposit 200 a month for 10 years, 12 months a year, so I knew I was gonna get $24,000. And you can see that interest made a big difference, right? You jumped from 24,000 to 30, almost 3,300. So that's almost a jump of $9,000 if you can find that account that pays you 6% interest. So that's a pretty large jump. All right, so that interest is really making a difference there. Now, if you want to know about the formula that would get you there directly, like if you wanted to see the annuity formula, and again, this is just doing it more of the exponential growth way, let me just show you what that is. All right, so the annuity formula, if you want to ignore the series part, you can say that A is equal to your principal which is P, and then this becomes more fun. You would do one plus R over N to the NT. Oops, yep, hold on, just kidding. Told you it's a fun equation. I missed a parentheses. You want this in parentheses. You wanna to go to the NT minus one, and then in ratio to R over N. All right, which looks like a lot, and it is, but in this case, that would mean I would go $200 times one plus 0.06 divided by 12 to the 10 times 12 minus 1 all over 0.06 divided by 12. Now I don't know if that seems easier to you or that seems more difficult than running the finite or the, the geometric series formula. But just give me a minute and I'll, I'll get this to work out to be the same number. So I want you to remember, here's where we were starting. All right, here I go. So I can do 200 times in parentheses, one plus 0.06 divided by 12. 
I'm going to raise that to the 120th power, subtract 1, close that second parentheses, divide by 0.06 over 12, and hope I didn't make a typo, and there it is. All right. I don't know if you feel like this is easier or if you feel like the geometric series formula is easier, but either way gets you there. But that's what this, this formula is dealing with, with annuity problems. This is the, your monthly deposit, or usually it's a monthly deposit. Here's your interest rate. Here's the number of times a year you're getting interest. This is the number of years you keep that money, that annuity going before you withdraw. And there's the formula to get it to work. All right, so either way, you saw me coming up with, I'd have about $32,775.87. All right, so with that, we're at the end of 9.4, and there was a lot in 9.4. So let's be real clear on what we know how to do. We should be comfortable with summation notation. All right, so if I give you a capital sigma, right, that E-looking thing, we should be able to follow that series out. We should be able to find the first n terms of a finite arithmetic series. There are two formulas that go with that. We should be able to find the sum of the first n terms of a finite geometric series. There's a formula that goes with that. We also looked at the sum of an infinite geometric series, and that's when your absolute value of r has to be less than 1. And then we solved an annuity problem. So now that we're through the first four sections, I really want you to hear out we have arithmetic sequences, arithmetic series, geometric sequences, geometric series. And each of those four things have their own formulas. And you really want to start to compartmentalize when can I use my formulas. When do I get to use a sub n is a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d? When do I get to use s sub n is um, a sub 1 times 1 minus r to the n over 1 minus r? we got to be real careful about when we're allowed to use those formulas. Because I've seen in the past where students really conflate the formulas. So practice these. Practice them over and over again until you start to say, okay, I have an arithmetic series, I know the formula I can use. I have an infinite geometric series, I know the formula that I can use. All right, so with that, that's gonna wrap up section 9.4. We're gonna actually skip section 9.5 and move on into 9.6. So I will see you in a few. Thanks so much, bye.